This is Jorge Cervantes, and I'm here in Southern Oregon with an expert on broad mites. This guy, Will, from the, the Oregon Sun Grown Growers Association, he knows all about mites and how to kill them. Actually, specifically the broad mites, because those are the little bitty guys you can't see. They're really hard to tell what, what you've got, and then by the time you figure it out, it's way late. So Will has got some specific products and a lot of information on how to apply them in different climates. Will, thanks so much, man. This is cool. Absolutely. Cool you're here. Well, tell me, uh, these damn broad mites, uh, they're a pain. And they really, they really make problems for everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you use to kill them? First, you, you diagnose them. Absolutely. Um, and one of the things that's really difficult that people are struggling with about russet mites is that, and broad mites and cyclamen mites, they're all too small to see with the naked eye. So we're used to dealing with spider mites and other pests that um, can be difficult to diagnose, but once you see them, they're there visibly. Um, and with, uh, with, the, uh, spy, with the broad mites and the russet mites, we need to have uh, viewing lenses and microscopes to identify what's happening. So when you say microscope, what do you mean? How many, how many power? The, the, the most ideal uh, power to find them is 60x. Okay, so you can have a little handheld scope Excellent. and find them yourself on the leaves. And where do they occur? Could you show me on this plant here? Yes. Um, so if, you're, if you were looking at a leaf on your plant, their favorite place to hang out is on the underside of the leaf, especially right next to uh, the, the leaf vein. So the, the, and what do you look for? What do they look like? Um, well, we'll we'll uh, we'll have to put some photos in of what you would see through the microscope. Um, the damage on the top of a plant uh, might be similar to this, where you've got. A, a, just hold that still for a minute so I can see it, but. Please continue, but hold it still. Okay. Uh, so, so a lot of times the damage from russet mites and broad mites uh, can be misdiagnosed as a nitrogen deficiency. Okay. Um, That's what that looks like right there. Yeah. This it, it, this this this, uh, this specimen here probably has a little bit of uh, spider mite infestation as well. But you're going to to see on the plants a a a, a, a lightning where you would expect it to be darker. This, this is an example here of, of, a, of, a, of a specimen that might be slightly less advanced. Um, but so that's, there's not much you can see there. Absolutely. You really have to pay attention to, to what's going on. Absolutely. And the, the thing is, the first time you diagnose spider mites or uh, uh, russet mites, you, you, you'll, you might notice it because of these symptoms, but you really want to, as if you know that you have them, you need to start looking at your plants through a handheld microscope or a tabletop microscope regularly. Yeah. Uh, because if you wait until you're seeing uh, damage on the top of the leaf like this, uh, the, the, the russet mite count on this leaf is probably above 200 mites per leaf. 200 mites per leaf? Yes. You mean, you can't, I can't see squat on this leaf, and there's 200 mites on there. 200, uh, oh, geez, oh, that's a lot. If I look at that, and then you look at that leaf closely, you can see very little problem. Well, I've seen it when these, right at the base of the leaf near the petiole, it curls up and the little buds uh, curl up and die and stuff. Absolutely. So usually most people don't realize what's going on for a while and until they really understand how to diagnose these, these, uh, these mites. So what do you do? What products do you use okay. when you've got an infestation. Okay, so the, the first thing is ideally, uh, you are look, watching this video early in the year and your plants are small and you haven't quite got a full-blown infestation um, and you, you identify them. Now, one of my favorite products to use is this product called PRF 97. Okay, uh, PRF 97, huh? Yes. Let me come in a little closer. Your finger's over the one side there. Let me come in a little closer here on the Latin name. So if there's another, so we can see that. This yeah, is, it's right on the skin or on the on the screen now. Yeah. So this is good. And uh, this PRF 97. Tell me a little bit about using it. How how does that work? 
So this is this product is it's a this is a live fungus. Okay, um, is it wettable powder? It's a wettable powder. Um, yet you mix up uh, one of the things that is. Uh, there's a couple things about this product. It's a really wonderful product. It's effective and it kills uh, a wide variety of pests fairly quickly. Including what kind of a list do you have for that? Uh, it'll it'll kill uh, it'll kill russet mites. It'll kill uh, broad mites and cyclamen mites. It'll kill spider mites. Yes. It'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll also kill um, some of the uh, some of the root. Uh, the root pests such as phylloxera or root aphids if you apply it as a drench. No, yeah, phylloxera, that's really bad or it can be bad around grapes as well, can't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And a lot of people, a lot of cannabis is grown in regions where grapes grow very well also. So that's a pest that we share, um, which is important for us to control so that we're good neighbors to our beautiful grape growing uh, friends. So true. And what you've got some more products here too, eh? Absolutely. Well, let, let me let me just give, give there's there's two things about this product. Um, one is it's a it's very difficult to mix with water. It's a wettable powder, but you need to mix it very well or it will clog your sprayer. Okay, so you mix a slurry first. You mix a little bit in like you well, you mix a little bit with water until you get a little slurry kind of a paste. And then you mix that with water and, and then, then that mixes much better. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and the other thing is like most bio, uh, fung bio uh, fungus based pest controlled things like this and like uh, Bavaria bassana, which I'll show you in a second, um, they need a high relative humidity to be effective. So this product is best applied either early in the spring in a greenhouse or in an indoor room where the humidity can be controlled and can be high. What's um, high mean? How high? Is there a trigger point for high humidity? 80% humidity uh, at the leaf surface. So if you have a, if you have a, an ambient humidity of 40 or 50%, that that's sufficient because the water on the bottom of the leaf will create a very a small microclimate which is higher but if your if your ambient humidity is 20 percent this product won't be very effective okay so it, it will work fine if your ambient humidity is above say 40 percent 45 absolutely and you want okay. to apply it uh, in the evening or very early in the morning if you're applying it outdoors okay and that's uh, against most spraying rules you know I mean to apply uh, apply it early in the evening so it goes all night Right. But since this is uh, for a fungicide, it's okay. Absolutely, and and it, it is very very difficult to deal with russet mites if your plants are already well into flower, which is the reason why normally you don't want to spray at night so that you uh, don't uh, you don't get mold. a fungus right. Um, but uh, if you are late into flower, um, it, it's very difficult to control. So this is something you really need to identify early and treat early uh, so that you're not battling it in that area where you're worried. Sure, sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. And then what else do you have for the for the broad mites and the hemp russet mites and the cyclamen mites? Okay, um, so this is, uh, this is Naturalis L, which is another fungus. Uh, it's uh, Bavaria bassana. Okay. Uh, um, which is, uh, has a slightly different mode of action. Um, generally speaking, whenever you're applying products, you don't want to apply the same product over and over. That's how you get resistant mites. Uh, right. So, so even when you're using organic and biologic controls, it's a good idea to use a wide variety of controls on a rotation. So you might apply the, the PRF 97 uh, and then apply this product uh, four or five days later. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I, I've used uh, the Basavera and it, it works great. It comes, all of these products come under several brand names. And uh, that's why I keep showing you the uh, Latin name. Absolutely. But yeah, that stuff works great. And uh, so, then you, the applications. Uh, but the cool thing is you've had direct experience with each one of these products absolutely. and you know how well they work. Absolutely. Um, so he, this, is a, this is another uh, biologic product. Um, this is, it's Grandivo. Um, which the good thing about this product is that you can apply it in any weather conditions. This is not a live fungus. It's a, it's a, uh, a bacteria which has been uh, grown and then heat killed and packaged. Um, and one of the proteins that the bacteria creates uh, is a, a stomach toxin to insects that eat leaves. Okay, so that's like BT, Bacillus thuringiensis, where they eat it, get sick, can't eat, and die. Absolutely, it's great. <laughs> which is exactly what we want for this. <laughs> um, and uh, this, 
yeah, this product is uh, is 14 grams per gallon. I've labeled it there, but um, you can see that the uh, if you want to see that the actual uh, species name there. Um, okay, here we go. Yeah, I've got, I got to just focus in here. Should work right about there. I'll keep it for a second. Uh, and and like I said, this products can be applied in rotation with other uh, products, which uh, like those ones I showed you before, um, and is not dependent on high humidity. Uh, it, it's also very gentle on beneficial insects because the the bugs won't die if they don't eat the leaves. So only leaf feeding insects are killed by this, which is a really good benefit. So you're not hurting your beneficials. Um, this product here uh, is not an actually a direct uh, uh, insect killer. This is a product which helps uh, other products spread and stick. Um, and it's particularly important with uh, the Grandivo. Um, this specific spreader sticker, Oro Boost, it's based on oranges and it smells really nice in your garden. Um, mm. And it, it, uh, up, it doubles the efficacy of Grandivo. Okay, Just so it's, a, it's got a, a synergist. Acts, a, having the, the, the Grandivo stick around on the plant leaves is uh, really makes it uh, more effective. So that's really important. Just because you apply it doesn't mean it's going to stay there. Absolutely. You yeah. know, keeping it there is, is super important with organic growing because the entire leaf surface, all of the foliage needs to be covered. Absolutely. And this, this, uh, this product is kinetic. Um, so anytime you're going to use a biological, or if you're worried about plants that might be a little bit more uh, uh, sensitive, this spreader sticker is more gentle and, and, and is almost as effective. So this is a good uh, tool to have in the toolkit if you uh, are having plants that look like they might be under stress. The Oro Boost, while it's very effective, can be a little bit difficult. This is actually uh, the result of Oro Boost. Um, applied when the plant was a little bit too sensitive. You're seeing this leaf curl here, and these right. pl these plants will uh, will grow out of this without any problem. Uh, but as soon as you quit beating them up, they get better. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but we we have to beat them up a little bit to get the, uh, those russet mites out. Sure, sure. No, um, those things are a real problem. Now, what is this? Um, this is pyganic, which is uh, a pyrethrum. Uh, it's an organically derived. Uh, pyrethrum product. Uh, pyrethrum is, a, is a, an insect neurotoxin. It's relatively safe for humans and mammals. It is OMRI listed. Um, the benefit of this product is that it, it provides a very fast knockdown. Um, if you have, if you are one of the people who happens to have, uh, you discover the, the, the russet mites or the broad mites and it's an infestation across your entire garden, this is a good pro a product to apply once or twice before you begin the other products because you'll get about an 80% kill rate within a day and a half, which um, it isn't enough to cure your garden, but it's definitely enough to, to slow the growth curve of the insect down. Um, so so uh, I, I would use this product with extreme caution, especially because uh, you can develop, res or the insects can develop resistance to it very rapidly. Um, but this is the safest product to use if you have an infestation and you need immediate results. Excellent, um, excellent. And the, the other good thing about this product is that it is very, UV sensitive, so uh, it breaks down within 48 hours, um, and and the, the 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 residue will no longer be on the plant at that point. So perfect, it's non-persistent. Non-persistent, exactly. All right, all right. Well, let's see. Are this what else you have under here now? This <laughs> biomite. This, What's this, is, this stuff? This is the last product I'm going to show you. Uh, this this biomite product is a it's an agricultural formulation of products that are um, based on essential oils and plants plant essences. So there's a lot of products on the market uh, that are available in small packages that are very expensive. Yeah, but there's a lot of lightweight stuff. Does that work? <laughs> um, essential oils are actually quite effective. Um, the, the, they can be hard on your plants, uh, but if you uh, want to take that approach, if that's something that really appeals to you, I, uh, this is a good thing to make people aware that you can have access to that um, that plant healing chemistry that's in essential oils without having to spend hundreds of dollars to treat your garden. Uh, the, the mainstream agricultural operations are using that same approach and you can buy uh, products which will 
give you those benefits without having to, to pay boutique store prices. Okay, I understand. I'm, so I'm all about the survival of the family farm, which means the inputs need to be cost effective. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Well, we need a little plug for the, uh, for the Growers Association now. Absolutely. So uh, I'm, I'm, my name is Will Feetham. I'm the vice president of the Oregon Sun Grown Growers Guild. Uh, we're here in Oregon and we represent uh, family farms and medical patients who want to uh, grow a sustainable family farming uh, cannabis industry. Um, so if you are in our area or even if you aren't, we'd love to have you come uh, visit our webpage and, and look at the, the policies we're promoting and the, the future we're trying to create for everyone who loves this beautiful plant. Okay, so what, what website is that now? Uh, it's OregonSunGrown.org. Okay, and does Oregon spelled out SunGrown and dot, dot org? Dot O-R-G. Okay, oh, that sounds great. Well, wonderful, Will. Thank you so much, and thanks for helping everybody get rid of these miserable mites, man. Absolutely. Thank and, you, Jorge. Hey, for <laughs> sure. Well, thanks a lot. I mean, this is Jorge Cervantes. We're signing off, and remember, kill a mite today, you'll feel better. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.